welcome to this month's episode of Chat with the Chairman. I'm Pam Hepburn, CFMA's 2021-22 Chairman, and today I'm sitting down with Bob Bobak. Bob is a partner with Gilmore, Jason, and Mahler, and Bob is also the recipient of the Chairman's Challenge coin. I got to, to give Bob that coin on December 19th of 2019 mm -hmm. at our Northwest Ohio Chapters Holiday Party. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. Welcome, Pam. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you with us. Yes. Yeah, um, so I'm kind of at an advantage here. I have known you for about 11 years, um, but the rest of our audience doesn't know you, or at least a lot of them don't. So why don't you okay. take a few minutes and tell us about you? Okay. So I, um, I've been doing this a long time, <laughs> doing it about 37 years. And I'm always in, I've been in public accounting. However, I've always been working with a lot of construction companies my whole career. And um, I really enjoy working with construction companies. That's where I primarily spend most of my time. And I also um, have a family. Uh, I have a wife, I'm married, and her name's Melissa. And then um, I have three children. So my stepson, from my wife's first marriage is Blake. And he's 23. And now we have a grandson who's four, Aiden. And then I got my daughter who lives with us. She's 20, going to be 21 coming up. She's in school, starting to be a, a, a registered nurse and also wants to be a paramedic. And then we got my youngest one, who's now 18. He, um, he just graduated from high school. He's attending Defiance College, where he's playing baseball for Defiance. And he also um, wants to be a, a bean counter or a CPA like his dad. Doesn't fall too far from this tree. Um, when it comes to hobbies, um, I yeah, used to try golf, but that was that was hopeless. And so years and years ago, I went to um, the fishing. I really enjoy fishing. I'm a member of um, a trout fishing club out here in northern Ohio. I know I've taken Pam out there. Yeah, had some yep. great times. Yeah, we went yep. we went fishing at at Rockwell's. Rockwell's. Yep. Rockwell Springs. Yep. And um, I also like to fish throughout the year. And then every time we travel, we always like to charter a boat and go fishing and we've, I've caught a sailfish and tuna and a whole host of different fish. That sounds like fun. It's always fun. Yeah, it's fun. So Very Bob, nice. I met you, like I said, about 11 years ago, I met you at the CFMA National Conference mm -hmm. um, and it was in Hawaii that year. So yeah, you, it was. Did it you was. go fishing in Hawaii? No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I should have. Uh, but I didn't. That would have been a great fishing spot. But, um, you know, our, our chapter um, has always sponsored the exiting president to attend the national conference. And so I was the chapter president before the Hawaiian conference. And so that was the conference that our chapter said, you're entitled to go to. I said, OK, I talk, let's do now this. Now you won the lottery on that one, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. And that's where I met Pam. Yeah. That's where I met so Pam. You were um, the chapter president. How did you get involved at the chapter um, as far as being in volunteer leadership? Yeah. So, you know, like I said, I've always practiced with um, construction companies. And I've always heard for years CFMA, but I never really knew what it was. And, and finally, I think it was like 2003, 2004, someone approached me and said, you, you really need to get into the CFMA. It's really good for networking, for your construction clients, for you to learn about the construction industry. I said, yeah, sure, why not? And so I got involved right away. And then um, they were actually looking for new board members. They had a lot of board members rolling off. And since I knew a lot of the members for a long time, I just had not been involved in the CFMA prior to that. They said, would you like to be on the board? I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. And then soon thereafter, they got me into the leadership of the board where we have a three-part leadership. The first year, you're part of, you do programs. The second, you're chairman of, or chairperson of membership. And then the third year, you're president. So you so went, went pretty much from becoming a member to becoming involved with the chapter pretty much right um, away. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And that's fantastic, because yeah. I, I, yeah. I've always thought you get so much more from your membership um, by volunteering with the chapter or volunteering. You really do. Yes. Yeah, you really yeah. do. That is fabulous. So I know you were, um, when I gave you the challenge coin, that was for uh, your efforts with both the Buckeye Conference and the golf 
uh, committee. Committee, yeah. So you chaired both the Buckeye Conference and the Golf Committee in the same year. Yep. Maybe for a couple of years on the Golf Committee. Yep. 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 I was still involved. Yep. Still involved. And so, and then I just did. So we have the Buckeye Conference that we've always organized with the Cincinnati chapter. And so that's every two years. And so we do it like we did it in 2017. And then Cincinnati hosted the Buckeye Conference in 2019. And we again did it in 2021. So how did you get involved as the chair of the Buckeye Conference? Well, that was kind of funny. So I was done being the president and it worked through the committee chairs. And um, we were coming up on the Buckeye Conference. And um, I was a little late coming to the meeting that day. Yeah. It is half funny because I, I was going to agree to do it anyways. But as I walked in, they said, congratulations, you're the chairman of the Buckeye Conference. <laughs> I remember that. I was at that meeting. and We were like, well, we'll just file and told him. And we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so be careful it, with being late to meetings. Yes. <laughs> or yes. stepping out during a meeting. <laughs> but after I attended that conference in Hawaii, I started going to the National every year because I thought it was fantastic. I thought the content was really well done. There was a lot of good information for the general members. And there was a lot of fun also. There's a lot of networking events, a lot of things going on. And so when I became chairman of the Buckeye Conference, I said, well, why don't we do it like the national? Because prior to that, we were doing it more like a it's like any type of CPE, you know, you go and you listen to someone for eight hours and um, you might get lunch and that was it, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of the presenters were volunteer presenters who were coming in and talking about the topic that they wanted. And some people might be interested and some people might not be. But it was more of a classroom style and, and um, it just didn't have the feel of the national. And so I said, well, why don't we hire speakers? And the rest of the community just looked at me like, you nuts, <laughs> you know, how are we going to pay for that? I said, well, you get sponsors. And I said, we need a couple of keynote speakers. And once you get the keynote speakers lined up, the sponsors will follow. And um, so the first one I did in 2017, um, you know, one of my clients is Larry Leland, who is brother to Jim Leland. Jim Leland is the former um, manager of the Detroit Tigers team that went to the World Series a couple of times with Detroit Tigers and um, was also the manager of the um, Miami team that beat the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> and Jer I mean, uh, Jim Leland's a great guy. And um, his brother called him up and he said, yeah, I'll do it. So we got him as a keynote speaker. We had to pay him. It was a modest amount. And um, boy, the, the sponsorships that were on in that. It really did. And so when we got all this additional sponsorship, we could start doing some kind of neat things. So we paid for a couple more speakers. And I remember we had one on, um, um, it was um, dealing with ethics. Mm -hmm. And it was a gentleman that owned a construction company in a bank in Texas. And um, during the previous Great uh, Depression, and he made some mistakes and unfortunately went to prison all just trying to save his company. And that was the story he told us. And it was a very, you know, eye-opening story about, you know, you got to practice ethics first. And so we start getting some really good speakers like that and we had a really good event. Um, I also remember like um, when the large banks sponsored a dinner and we were talking about, okay, what kind of bar bill do we want? We want to go with low shelf, middle shelf or top shelf. And I said, well, it, it's going to reflect on the, the bank sponsor. So we have to go top shelf. Well, I remember them. that I was on that committee with you, Bob, and I remember you were very focused on making sure that the sponsors got um, a lot of access to the participants and that they were really well represented because, and I think doing that um, helped sponsors get engaged with our golf outing and get engaged mm -hmm. again with the Buckeye Conference. I think that's been fabulous for those events. Yeah, I mean, the golf on the same year, we had a... a, a, a Married couple that had been doing the golf outing for years and did a great job with it. They really did. Uh, Bob and Kathy Gummo, they did a fantastic job with it. And they built it into this great event that we were making, uh, you know, and these were scholarship dollars. 50% um, went to UT and 50% went to BGSU here in Northwest Ohio. And we were 
giving them each ten thousand dollars a check a year. So that's twenty thousand in donations. And um, they had announced that year that they were no longer going to do it. So everyone looked at you know like look around who's going to do it who's going to do it. And I said okay let me just do it. <laughs> you know I'll do that and I'll do the Buckeye Conference and yeah I think we did really well both. Yeah. And um, yeah, and and took it to the next level. And, and again, so you know, as part of our conference, we have networking sessions that um, you know, after the first day, we do have a um, networking where there's some adult beverages served, but that's all included in the price of the conference. Lunches are provided. Then we have a big dinner. So that year we went to Toledo Museum Mart, which is like the fifth um, best museum in the country. They had dinner there and they did a glass blowing, I remember, and everyone was sitting there watching them do the glass blowing. And, um, and, and so it, it really is, it's a, it's a really good conference, I believe, with low price and a lot of benefits for members. And how Whatever, does the committee go about selecting sessions and speakers for the conference? Yeah, so it's critical to have general members. And when I put the committee together, I always make sure that the general membership is well represented on the committee. So you need at least about 60 or 70% of the Buckeye committee being general members. And then we vet everything to them. So any ideas we come up, we turn to general members and we go, is this of interest to you? Would you be interested in learning more about this? And sometimes they say yes, and sometimes said, no, we've heard that six times, 10 times, 15 times, we don't wanna <laughs> hear that anymore. And so we really try to get a program that the general members want to hear, something on cutting edge, something new, but it's more industry driven. It's not, you know, a lot of times you'll get your professional providers like CPA firms that want to talk about tax code or generally accepted accounting principles, but we don't talk about that at the Buckeye Conference. It's more industry driven. So this last one we just did in 2021, we had a session on artificial intelligence and using that in the accounting department, diversification, diversity in your workforce. We had a really good panel doing that. Um, we had a, a gentleman, uh, Barry Live, he was a keynote speaker on this last conference and um, he was a construction worker that got buried alive and told his story. And um, really stuff that I think construction companies and, and leadership, primarily the financial leadership of construction companies want to hear. I know you've done a lot for the chapter in your volunteer efforts, but what, as an associate member, what does volunteering do for you? Well, it, it gives me a broader perspective of my clients, first of all, um, because I'm, I'm learning things that normally I wouldn't learn in, in a typical CPE that I take from my license, which is primarily generally accepted accounting principles or tax. So I'm, I'm learning about a lot about the industry. And um, so I taught one time for our chapter, the um, WIP 360, Work in Process 360, which we, um, we, we, we had a couple of speakers and we dove into analyzing your work in process. And I learned even something from teaching that class, you know, and I think, Pam, I think you're one of them that uh, you use it to forecast your cash flow, mm -hmm. your future cash flow on the job. You know, I never thought of it that way. I always thought of more of historical information. Right. It, and, and so from an audit perspective, you look at my web and say, okay, do the costs match the general ledger accounts? And yeah. am I recognizing revenue appropriately? And do my estimates seem reasonable? Right. Right. And, and exactly. maybe do like the fade gain, but not, not using it to, to forecast things in the future or analyze my current workflow or anything like that. Correct. But then I have, you know, smaller construction companies that maybe aren't as sophisticated. And I just help them understand how important a work whip is for, you know, knowing your true profitability, but then using that to forecast in the future. And, um, you know, it, it, again, it just makes you a broader person and uh, what you understand. And so um, I think it's a wonderful, you know, it's a wonderful thing, wonderful thing to get out of being a member, of an associate member. You really start to understand the industry at a much higher level. That's great. 
So I noticed that you, I think it looks like you're at home. Are you in your home office today? Yes, I'm in my home office. Unfortunately, I have some Ohio State cartoons in the back, you know, some of the famous Buckeye players and they're all crying today. They're all crying. <laughs> it, was a, it was a tough weekend. The team up north got us. <laughs> but that happens. They, they played a really good game. It happens, but not often. Push. At least yeah, not, not recently. Doesn't not recent off, but we, there's people from Michigan probably going to listen to this. So, Well, <laughs> I'm a so. Michigan fan, so it, it was kind of fun to watch from my perspective. <laughs> I know. I see those Michigan people walking around, the biggest smile on their face I've ever seen. <laughs> so is your, is your company back to work? um in the office full-time is it is it hybrid what are you guys doing that way so we pretty much encourage people to come to the office because in our industry there's a couple of things that are critical collaboration being able to sit in a room and bounce ideas off each other and then be able to communicate quickly with each other however we are doing a hybrid so you know we let each staff decide which way they would like to to perform we encourage them to come to office at least one day a week. So we can collaborate and stuff like that. But we still, if they would rather work from home, they can work from home. Um, we learned from this pandemic that it, it can work from home quite effectively. You don't have to be in the office mm -hmm. um, for the right people. I mean, you know, so we have other staff that um, they have too much commotion at their home. And so they've said that. They, they actually want to come into the office. They want to be around other people to collaborate and communicate because our culture is more of a family culture where, you know, we like to just chat sometimes. And it, does, and it doesn't have to be about work either. So there was a lot of chatting going on today about um, Browns football and um, Ohio State football. I got it. <laughs> None of it was good. <laughs> And the Michigan people were glowing, so, you know, so. But, I mean, it, it, some people like that. They want to be around people. Mm -hmm. So and working from home full-time, you'd miss out on that. You miss that out That kind of that. connection. But connection. I think we're learning just as a society that different different people have different um, preferences. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and they, they are starting to need some flexibility. And it Correct. depends, of course, on the kind of job that they do. Um, so for us, of course, you can't build a, a hospital sitting at home. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but yeah. depending on the needs of the job, you know, people can do some of it from home. Yeah. And what we're finding out some people that live farther from the office, even just that drive every day is mm -hmm. eating up time that they're losing. It helps and with so, work-life balance if they don't have to commute does. every day. Yeah. That makes a it lot does. of sense. It does. It really does. So, so how is, and, go ahead. Sorry. So again, so that is also opening our eyes to, you know, recruiting. Sure. And so, you know, our firm is growing at a nice pace and we're always recruiting. We've got continuous recruiting model. And, I, and that I'll use a Big Ten recruiting model instead of Ohio State. OK, <laughs> Where, uh, we bring in a deep bench every year. We bring in about 15 entry level staff and interns and, and um, we work together. And those that, you know, we connect with and they connect with us, we eventually hire. And it's a good way for us to just, you know, always have a deep bench. So we always have a continuous hiring. It's continuous. And kind of analyze that cultural fit of, yep. of the potential permanent employees. And, and some staff, you know, going to college, you don't know what it is to work for a public accounting firm or what it, it's like to work in, in corporate. Mm -hmm. So until you try it, you don't know if it's a good fit for you anyways. Sure. And some people decide it's not a good fit. We had one that, you know, this young lady did a great job getting work done, but she came to us and said, I really don't want to talk to anyone, clients or, or superiors. I really want to just want to work home and um, please don't bother me. I'll just get my work done. And, and we did. We accepted that. But I said, she's not going to be long for this place. I mean, I just know that she doesn't fit our culture. Because mm -hmm. we have to meet with our clients as part of our job. Right. You can't just you know? stay focused on a spreadsheet all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And she found, actually, she's still here in Northwest Ohio, but she got hired by a 
big hospital chain out of Kansas City, and she's working from home, processing accounting at her home office. And so she's probably happier. It's probably a better fit for her. Sure. So how's COVID affecting the chapter um, at Northwest Ohio? Are, are we back full time? Are we virtual? What's what's going on with the chapter? So yeah, that was interesting. So last year, you know, it caught us all by surprise in March when everything got shut down. And, you know, and so we we went virtual last year. And, and again, just getting up to speed up virtual was a struggle. Mm-hmm. You know, we had some really terrible first um sessions simply because we couldn't get the computers to work and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It was, it was, it was a learning curve. I mean, you know, it's just a learning curve, you know. And um, but you know, we were start we kept on trying to have meetings, but you know, our chapter is built on education and networking. And um, of course, there was no networking going on. And so even with the general members. And so, um, you know, we were all virtual last year and our, our attendings were really dropping. I mean, you know, we usually have about 40 show up for lunch, 30 to 40, and then we were down to 10. And we were buying lunch and having it dropped off by DoorDash and stuff like that. But that's still, you know, I think, you know, and then people like multitask. So when you're sitting at lunch, eating your lunch, trying to watch our session virtually and you have other things popping in your inbox. Check in their email. Yeah. You just go to that, you know. So it didn't work real well. So this year we decided to go on person. And we dropped the virtual. Well, and I think there's a huge level of Zoom fatigue for people with online Mm -hmm. learning. I mean, there is a convenience factor that you can do it from your desk. You don't have to travel to a meeting. But like you said, you don't get the networking and, yep. and it's hard to concentrate and not multitask. Oh, it is. I can't do it. <laughs> I didn't turn off my outlook before we started this because I know this stuff would be popping up in front of me. Then you'll be going, ooh, shiny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Squirrel. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, and so, yeah, I, you know, it doesn't work for me at all. And, and so, um, you know, I, I think it's the right decision. We had our first. Um, in-person meeting we had about 30 people there oh that's fabulous yeah. I didn't make that meeting because I had another CFMA um, on the national side of things right. but, so yeah. I hope to be back to our meetings pretty soon more often <laughs> yep we hope to see you real soon yeah well Bob it's been fantastic talking Same to here. you today I appreciate Same you here. taking time out of your day to do this um, we always like to ask our viewers a question And then viewers can make comments down below um, in the YouTube. So this month's question is, how do you learn better? Do you learn better online or do you learn learn better in person? We'll be interested to see everybody's comments on that. Yeah, I would love to see what everyone says about that. Yeah. And everyone has a personal flavor. I'm sure they do. What works best for them. Well, Bob, yep. thank you so much for joining You're welcome. me today. And for everybody watching, be sure to tune in for next month's episode when I'll be uh, visiting with Gail McClellan. Gail is the president of DM Surety. And I'm looking forward to that conversation as well. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Nice talking with you, Pam. <laughs>